I like to start these videos off by asking a question and spending the next four or five minutes answering that question to the best of my ability. However, this week I have a lot of questions and almost no answers regarding you, your genome, and genetic privacy. Now this is something that I've spent a large amount of time thinking about, and it's come up in the news recently due to something known as HeLa cells. HeLa cells are an immortal cell line used in labs worldwide to study everything from cancer to the creation of the polio vaccine. The term HeLa comes from the name Henrietta Lacks, and Henrietta was a woman living in the 1950s who was, unfortunately, dying of cervical cancer. Before she died, her doctor took a sample of one of her tumors, brought it back to the lab, and created a cell line. Now, at the time, consent for this sort of thing wasn't customarily asked for and it wasn't required, so he wasn't doing anything wrong. Now, the problem and ethical quandary here came from the fact that people were able to readily associate Henrietta's name with her sample. That does raise some privacy issues, and her family didn't even know that her cells were being used in this sort of medical testing until the 1970s. At that point, their own medical records had been dragged into some of this, and their own privacy had been breached in a couple of different ways. And so they were understandably upset that their mother's cells were being used without their consent or her consent. Now, the story is a little bit more complicated than I want to get into in this specific video. But Rebecca Skloot wrote a book called The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which I read about a year ago and I really enjoyed. And it does a really good job at looking at the science behind HeLa cells and what they're being used in, as well as the ethics behind using human cell cultures. And also, it takes a really interesting look at the Lax family and their life and how they dealt with this issue. So I'd recommend it if you're interested in it. But the reason that I bring up HeLa cells are because recently a German group published the sequence of the HeLa genome. Now this group published the sequence as a public tool for other labs doing research on HeLa cells. However, when the Lax family found out about it, they were understandably upset that they hadn't even been consented before their mother's genome was put out there. Now Henrietta is a special case, because not only did she not know or get consent for her name to be attached to her cell samples, but she also isn't around today to make informed decisions about how they're being used and how her information is being shared with the public. In this case, her family is the only entity that can step in and make these decisions. Now the German group was not at all required to get consent from the family, but it's an interesting ethical question of whether or not they should have, and when the family asked for them to take the sequence down, they did. They consented to the family's wishes and they did. Now this case raises a lot of questions about genetic privacy and who has the right to see your genome. Now currently the population of people who have their genome sequenced is very small. Unless you have some sort of pressing medical condition in which sequencing your genome might help direct your treatment, it's sort of a novelty thing. You can take a cheek swab and send it off to be sequenced and you can find out results about what's in your DNA. Now were you to get your DNA sequenced right now, you might find out some pretty interesting things about yourself. You might be able to find out where your ancestors came from, you might be able to find out what alleles of certain genes you have, and you could also discover your disease risks. Now, this raises some interesting questions. If you were to get back this sequence, and it were to tell you that you have a 50% increased risk of developing Alzheimer's, would you want to know? Now, personally, I want to get my genome sequenced. There's no medical reason for me to do so. It is sheer curiosity about the base pairs that help to define who I am but I want to know, and that means that I have spent a lot of time thinking and weighing the risks of what I might find out. I have decided that I want to find out what's in my genome, even if it's not potentially good news. Now there are some things that my genome might predict that I might be able to make lifestyle changes about. If it comes back and says that I have an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, for example, I can make conscious decisions about my lifestyle, my eating habits, and my exercise habits to see what I can do to affect my chance of actually developing that disease. On the other hand, it might come back with things like Alzheimer's that there's really no effective cure for at the moment, and that might be something that I can see and I can say, yes, there's a much increased possibility that I'm going to get that, and that's something that I'm going to know for the rest of my life. Now that might put some sort of emotional burden on me. It raises some very interesting questions about how it will affect my life, but I have spent time thinking about that and I've made the decision that I want to know, good or bad, I want to know what's in there. So that's my first question to you, is do you want to get your genome sequenced? Do you want to know what is hiding in those base pairs, good or bad, and would it impact the way that you lived your life? Now my next question to you is who would you share that information with? It makes sense that the first person you would share this sort of information with is your doctor. You two can discuss the results, you can discuss what sort of lifestyle changes you might want to make based on them. But would you want to share this sort of information with your biological family, the people who share parts of your DNA? Now it's very possible that your family members might not want to know. While you have made the decision to find out what is in your DNA, they might want to go on living their lives without knowing that. They might not want those answers, and that's alright. But maybe you don't want to share your information with them, even if they do want to know. 
but these are people who share your DNA, who could possibly be sharing some of those results with you. And is it okay for you to be withholding information that could possibly have a big impact on their lives? I don't have answers for these questions, but I do think that they're really important ones to start thinking about because honestly, I believe that within the next 10 or 15 years, a lot more people are gonna get their genome sequenced and that's really where medicine is headed. I really think that personalized medicine and genomics are the future of health and that in the not so distant future, you're probably going to get your genome sequenced just as part of your normal workup. It's going to be just as normal as getting your blood tested. So with that in mind, let's bring this privacy question a little bit farther than just you, your family, and potentially your friends. What about the public? Should your sequence be public information? In 2008, in the United States, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act was passed. And what this does is it means that employers and health insurance companies may not discriminate against you based upon your genetic sequence. However, it does not protect against discrimination from life insurance companies, disability insurance, and long-term care. Now what this means is that if you get your DNA sequenced and you get a result back that says you are at a higher risk for something that could potentially kill you at a young age, a life insurance company can see that and say, you know what, we really don't want to offer you life insurance. And that can have financial and emotional impacts on you and your family. Now a lot of people will look at that and say, well fine, this is my private information, maybe I'll share it with my doctor, maybe I'll share it with my family, but beyond that, why would I want to share it with anyone else? And to you, I say scientific research. When I get my genome sequenced, and I am saying when, not if, I will want to share that data with science. In my ideal world, there is some giant database of all the sequences paired up with medical records, paired up with traits, so that there is this massive database of information from which we can do research and we can mine information between correlations, between genes and health impacts and traits and all sorts of different things. And honestly, I think that that would be phenomenal. But I also understand that I have a vested interest in this. I want to go into genetics, and so obviously I want to create this giant database that I can do research from and that my colleagues can do research from. So maybe I'm not the best person to ask, especially considering that once a week I invite the internet into my bedroom. Maybe I'm not the greatest person to be talking about privacy. But I do really think and would encourage other people that you should share your information with as much of science as possible. Now at the moment there are people whose sequences are being used in scientific research. And the researchers have no idea who they are. They have stripped the names from the sequences to give these people some sort of anonymity. But a research group at the Whitehead Institute put out a study in January that showed that you actually could trace these samples back to their owners. These researchers took anonymous sequences already being used in scientific research and they looked at the Y chromosomes, they looked at specific markers on the Y, and compared them to public recreational databases like Ancestry.com. Currently, you can take a cheek swab, send it off to Ancestry.com, and they can come back and say, hey, here's some of your DNA, here's where your ancestors might have come from, and here's some people you might be related to. And that's really cool, and a lot of people are doing it. But these researchers were able to compare those Y chromosomes to sequences found in these databases, and narrow it down to a last name. Now, it might not be the same person that they found in the database, but because last names are often passed down in the male lineage, just like Y chromosomes, they could get a pretty good guess at the last name of this anonymous sequence. What they did from there was they used the internet, they used Google, and they used this last name, and they used some other identifiers that came with the sequence, like the age and the state that this person were from, and they found the names of the people that these sequences belong to. Now they did this to prove a point. They didn't do it to publish the names of the people they found or to track them down, but to show that at the moment no one can really guarantee you anonymity of your sample. No one can say with complete certainty that no one's going to figure out that this sample belongs to you. And that can be a little scary to some people. So I want to go back to that HeLa sequence that was published just a couple months ago. The interesting thing here is that one of the reasons that the Lax family gave for not wanting Henrietta's DNA to be public was because they felt that it was also their own information that was being shared because Henrietta was their mother or their grandmother, her DNA was passed down to them. So by being able to investigate Henrietta's DNA, you can also, in a way, investigate the DNA that her family might have inherited, and they claim that this was their private information that was being shared. Henrietta is a special case because she's no longer around, but what if I made my DNA public and my family made the same argument? What if my parents said, no, that's our DNA that she inherited, that's our information that you're looking at, we don't want that public, take it back. Could my brother make the same argument? Could my kids if I had any? At what point do you have to be genetically related to someone to claim that that's not just her information, 
that's mine too. So if you're still with me at this point, congratulations. I have thrown a lot of hard ethical questions at you and done so in a very short amount of time. This is a conversation that honestly should take far longer than the length of this video, should take hours and should take lots and lots of consideration on your part. I tried to hit on a lot of the big topics, but there's a ton of stuff that I missed and a ton of stuff that I left out. And so, man, that is what the comment section is for. And again, I don't have answers to these questions. I can only tell you my answers. Do I want to get my genome sequenced? Absolutely. I am so curious. Would I share that information with my family? If they wanted to hear it, I would. I don't know that they do, but if they wanted to know, I would happily share it with them. I would also share it with my doctor, I would share it with my friends, and I would share it with the public. I would share anything that I think in any way could benefit science, could benefit public research, could do anything. So I'm very open. I will share whatever you want to know about my DNA. This was a hard one, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I am really interested to see how other people feel about this. And so keep thinking, go forth, and do science.